Hello everyone, let's talk about how to find the domain of basic radical functions. In this video, we focus on those with a linear expression inside. For radicals with an even index, such as square roots and fourth roots, the function value is real when the expression inside the radical is non-negative. So in order for us to find the domain, we set up an inequality with the expression greater than or equal to zero, and we solve the inequality. For the basic function square root of x, the domain is 0 to positive infinity, including 0. For radicals with an odd index, such as cube roots, the expression inside can be negative, 0, or positive. So the domain will be all real numbers. Now let's look at the examples. Okay, so we have our first function here, which is the square root of 3x minus 2. And as you can see, this is a square root. And as we just talked about, we are going to find the set of all the x values so that 3x minus 2, the inside expression, will be non-negative. And so that means we are going to write 3x minus 2 to be greater than or equal to 0. And then we are going to solve this inequality. And to solve this inequality, we just need to isolate the x because this is a linear expression here. And so all we need to do right now is to add 2 to both sides of the inequality. And then we are going to, well, those will get canceled, right? So we are going to, we are going to get 3x greater than or equal to 2. Okay, and then now what's next? We are going to divide both sides by 3. So we are going to divide both sides by 3. And then as you can see that the 3 will get canceled. So we are going to get x is greater than or equal to 2 over 3. And so that means this function will be defined for all the x values greater than or equal to 2 over 3. And if we are writing the answer in interval notation, based on this inequality here, we can simply just write the domain. Um, so we have 2 over 3 and then comma, and then we are going to put the infinity. And for infinity, we always use parentheses. And then you may say, what about the uh, the 2 over 3? There is an equal sign right here, so we are including the 2 over 3, so that means we are going to use the, uh, the square brackets. And so that's our domain for this function. Now let's look at the next example. You know what, the second function is almost the same thing as the first function, but it's actually really different. This is actually a keyword function. This is the keyword of 3x minus 2. And because this is a radical with an odd index, so what happened is that we are going to get, uh, we can have a negative number in here, a positive number in here, or a zero in here. So uh, there is no restriction on the x. So that means the domain for this function will just be all real numbers. And to represent all real numbers in the interval notation, we are going to just write negative infinity to a positive infinity and just make sure that you use parentheses for both infinity here. Okay, and now we are going to look at the next example. Okay, now coming back to a square root function, this time we actually have some extra stuff and there is a 4 outside the square root function of 5 minus x. And then you may say, what do we do with the 4? Does that affect how we are finding the domain? That 4 actually doesn't really matter here. That's a constant that's being multiplied to the radical function. So we can actually just ignore the 4. And all we need to do is to just take this 5 minus x and use the same idea as the first example. We are going to just write it as... Uh, greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so now we just need to solve this inequality. And to solve this inequality, what we're going to do is to isolate the x. And so that means we are going to subtract the 5 from both sides first. And so let's do that. And then subtract the 5 from both sides. We are going to be getting, okay, so the 5 and the negative 5 will get canceled. We get negative x greater than or equal to negative 5. There is one thing that's really important uh, not to forget is that there, there was a minus sign attached to the x because the coefficient for the x is a negative one. And so we need to make sure that we remember to copy it down for the next step. Okay, so it's not x, it's negative x here. And then now the next step is to get rid of the negative one in front of the x. And so that would be to divide both sides by negative one, or we can multiply both sides by negative one. It doesn't really matter here. And so if we divide both sides by negative one, then we are going to, well, the the negative one and negative one, they cancel each other out. We are going to just get x on the left side of the inequality. And then on the right side of the inequality, it, will, it would be negative five divided by negative one. So we are going to get positive five. Now there is one problem here. When we are multiplying or dividing by a negative number for an inequality, we need to switch the inequality symbol. And so in this case, the arrow is not pointing to the right anymore. It must be pointing to the left. And so we change that. So it would be x 
less than or equal to five. Okay, and so that would be the solution to that inequality. And based on this solution, we can simply start writing down the, the domain. So to write down the domain, because now we want to take all the values less than or equal to five. So that means we are going to write five on the right side of the interval notation. And then there's a comma here. And then because there is no restrictions on the left side, right? So the you can actually have x as small as you want it to be. So we are going to have negative infinity on the left side. And then we are going to use parentheses for the negative infinity. Then you may say, what about the five? The five, because there was an equal sign here, included, uh, we're including the five. So we are going to just put a square brackets right here, right? So just this U bracket right here. And then we have the domain for this function. And as you can see, the, the four actually uh, is not affecting the domain. So whether there was a four here, there was a five here, 1000 here, it does not really change how we are writing down this domain. What matters is actually the stuff that's inside the square root. Okay, so that's it for all those three examples. And then uh, thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.